In this video, we're going to take a look at wave calculations. Here's an overview of what we'll be looking at. And we're going to start by looking at the relationship between wave speed, wavelength and frequency. So first of all, a reminder about what wavelength is. It's the distance from peak to peak, or indeed from any point to another point where the wave completes a full cycle. Wave speed is the rate at which a wave propagates through a medium, and it has the units meters per second. Wave frequency is the number of wave cycles that pass a fixed point per second, and it has the units of hertz or per second. Now the relationship between these three quantities is shown here. So wave speed equals wave frequency times wave length. So V equals F times lambda. And we can use this equation in different situations. And if we're provided with two bits of information, we can calculate the third bit of information. And we may have to rearrange the equation to do that. Now for standing waves. So standing waves store energy rather than transmit it. And an example would be the vibration of a string that's fixed at both ends, for example, on a guitar. The fundamental frequency is the lowest frequency at which a system naturally oscillates. And it's also referred to as the first harmonic and it's the simplest mode of vibration in a system. Now, the equation that we can use to calculate something called harmonics is shown here. And harmonics are the frequencies that are whole number multiples of the fundamental frequency. So we have F subscript N for the frequency of the nth harmonic n itself is the harmonic number and f1 is the fundamental frequency. So let's look at an example calculation and the question is what is the frequency of the third harmonic for a string that has a fundamental frequency of 175 hertz. So we have the equation n equals 3 because it's the third harmonic, f1 equals 175 hertz because that's the fundamental frequency, Putting those numbers into the equation gives us 525 hertz. So that's the frequency of the third harmonic. Now, if we just look visually what these harmonics are, the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency is just where the string vibrates back and forth with just one loop, as it were. Second harmonic has two of these loops and we just continue as shown here. So for the different harmonics, we have different numbers of loops within the vibrational mode of the string. And some useful equations that go along with this are that the number of nodes equals n plus 1, the number of antinodes equals n, and the number of loops or segments, as we saw in the previous slide, equals n. And this is all where n is the harmonic number. To calculate the wavelength of a standing wave, we can use this equation here. So we have lambda subscript n equals 2L over n. Now lambda subscript n is the wavelength of the nth harmonic. L is the length of the string and n is the harmonic number. So again, by knowing some of the information, so by knowing two bits of the information, we can calculate the third bit of the information and we may need to rearrange the equation to do that. We can also calculate the frequency of a vibrating string depending on the tension on the string. So for this one, we have F subscript N equals the frequency of the nth harmonic in Hertz. N is the harmonic number. L is the length of the string. T is the tension on the string. And now that's a four, so that's in Newtons. And mu is the mass per unit length of the string. So it's like the density of the string 
but it's per meter so it's kilograms per meter and if n equals 1 then that's for the fundamental frequency so again we've got a useful equation here that relates these different parameters and we can do some useful calculations with that so depending on the information that we're given we can calculate something so it might be that we're given everything apart from the frequency of the harmonic and then by putting that into the equation we can work out that frequency now an overtone is a term used in acoustics and music to refer to any frequency higher than the fundamental frequency of the sound being produced and overtones contribute to the unique sound qualities or timbre of a musical instrument now overtones that are an integer multiple of the fundamental frequency are referred to as harmonics and the first harmonic is the fundamental frequency itself the second harmonic is referred to as the first overtone the third harmonic is referred to as the second overtone and so on this is illustrated in this diagram here so it's the same image as we saw earlier on but just with the new labels that give us information in terms of overtones. So overtones that are not integer multiples of the fundamental frequency also exist and they're referred to as non-harmonic overtones. And these non-harmonic overtones are common in certain types of musical instruments such as drums and bells and they contribute to more complex and unique sound qualities for those particular instruments. So that's been a video about wave calculations. I hope you found that useful. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and thanks very much for watching.